Yes, because of this investigation, I had to flee Venezuela. Um, I, 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 I went to Colombia in 2018. Hi there, it's WAMC News Director Ian Pickus. And on this episode of the WAMC News Podcast, we speak with reporter Roberto Dennis, who gave up almost everything to report on Venezuela. While a new documentary focuses on the sprawling corruption within Venezuela's government and the way Nicolas Maduro has cracked down on coverage of it, a dangerous assignment, Uncovering Corruption in Maduro's Venezuela, is premiering on PBS's Frontline series. Everyone was trying to figure out who is this guy, why is he so important to the Venezuelan government. Saab met with the DEA and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He was someone who was playing both sides. It focuses on the work of reporter Roberto Dennis, who was forced to flee to continue reporting on Alex Saab, a close Maduro ally. In 2016, uh, we decided to investigate a social program in Venezuela uh, called CLAT, Comité Locales de Abastecimiento y Producción. Uh, this was a kind of social measure from the Venezuelan government that it seems that it was going to help people, especially poor people in Venezuela. Uh, we have to remember that in 2016, Venezuela was living a tremendous economic and social crisis. And what we uncovered when we decided to investigate this is that this was not a social program. Uh, this was a, a business. And behind this business was uh, a Colombian entrepreneur. His name is Alex Saab. Uh, that, that was a guy very close, and it is a guy very close. Uh, he is a guy very close to Nicolás Maduro. But at that moment, maybe in Venezuela, uh, there, there wasn't a lot of info about who was this guy. And, and that was what we uncovered. And since that moment, we started to see that Alex Saab was a kind of uh, figure behind the, the political power of Nicolás Maduro. And this guy uh, got several contracts, not only to, to buy food in, in other countries and send that food to Venezuela, uh, also, oil, con oil contracts, um, gold contracts. Uh, Alex Saab also uh, participated in a, a scheme where where he was exporting Venezuelan gold to countries like Turkey and and other countries. And and I think that maybe that is the the most important thing is that we not only uncover that this was not a social program program. This was a business on behalf of uh, the poor people uh, and also the role of this guy, Alexa, behind Nicolas Maduro's power. Can you explain how the opposition to Maduro was effectively co-opted by Saab and his associates? Yes, there was, there was a moment uh, when Alex Saab uh, was, uh, was being investigated in different countries different countries, not only in the United States, also in some Europe countries, also in Colombia. Um, and Alex Saab needs, you know, um, some Venezuelan politicians uh, try to act and make things internationally to try to um, make a kind of favor to him, um, talk about his business in Venezuela, try to, to, to say that he was... Um, Colombian entrepreneur, that he was doing a normal business in Venezuela, that he, he was not related to, to Nicolás Maduro. And for that mission, Alex Saab and all of his partners started to co-opt some Venezuelan um, um, opposition politicians. And, and that was a, a, a very crucial moment from Venezuela because that was happening in 2019. And there was a moment when it seems that the opposition, the Venezuelan opposition, was divided. And what part of that opposition was represented by Juan Guaidó, that, that was the Venezuelan politician that has the international you know, recognition. And the other side of the opposition uh, was a side uh, 
leader by Luis Parra, that was a guy that was in connection with the people of Alex Saab to make uh, some trips to Europe, uh, some some trips to Col also to Colombia to try to defend uh, the Alex Saab business in Venezuela. Of course, this is something that it happened secretly. This was not public. This this um, Venezuelan opposition opposition uh, politician was doing this in secret. No, of course, no, no, no. What, what not was um, something that was public. Now you faced some really intense personal costs amid your reporting, uh, and and so did your family. Eventually, you had to leave the country to stay on the story. Uh, what's the situation like for you and the people in your life today? Yes, because of this investigation, I had to flee Venezuela. Um, I, 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 I went to Colombia in 2018, just two years after this investigation started. Um, nowadays, I, I don't know when I, I can go back to Venezuela. I don't know if that is going to be possible in the next few years. Um, of course, part of my family is uh, continue living in Venezuela. Uh, they have suffered uh, some of the pressure of the Venezuelan judicial system uh, because uh, it has been moment where the the Venezuelan judicial system has uh, act against me. But also, it's something that my family has suffered uh, uh, because they continue living in, in Venezuela, in Caracas. And I would say that uh, this documentary, I think that is very important because also shows what is the risk, what is the cost for a journalist uh, that try to do this kind of, of job in a country, an autocratic country like is Venezuela right now. Um, and I continue doing my job in exile. Um, I haven't uh, came back to Venezuela since 2018. And right now, as I said, I don't know if that would be possible in the next few years for me. What did Maduro gain from the relationship with Saab? <laughs> that is a very interesting question because during a lot of years, Nicolás Maduro never talked about Alex Saab. Uh, Saab wa was kind, you know, wa was kind of uh, a shadow behind the firewood, but nobody wanted to talk about him. And Nicolás Maduro just started to talk and defend Alex Saab just after his arrest in Cabo Verde in 2020, in June of 2020. And of course, when he was extradited to United States. Um, for me, it is very clear that Alex Saab was a kind of, you know, it's a kind of central figure for Nicolás Maduro, uh, doing uh, financial um, operations to benefit Nicolás Maduro and probably Nicolás Maduro's family. And I am totally convinced that that is a reason because Nicolás Maduro has done a lot to try to get the freedom of Alex Saab as he he got in, in last December. And I, I, I think that today, even after many years of investigating this story, I think that we, we don't have all the information and we don't, maybe we don't have all the things that uh, Alex Saab uh, did uh, for Nicolás Maduro and Nicolás Maduro's family. And, and I think that that is the main reason uh, because uh, Maduro, because Alex Saab is so important for Nicolás Maduro. We've been speaking with the journalist Roberto Dennis, and his reporting is featured in the new PBS Frontline film, A Dangerous Assignment, Uncovering Corruption in Maduro's Venezuela. Um, Roberto, thank you for your time, and also thank you for the work you're doing. Please keep it up. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Okay, that does it for this episode of the WAMC News Podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time... I'm Ian Pickus.